Welcome and thanks for joining us on today's episode of Discussions with Derek and Susan. You can catch us on all major listening platforms and you can watch Derek and Susan live in the studio on YouTube. Now let's hand it over to Derek and Susan. Welcome everyone once again to discussion with Derek and Susan. We want you to engage, to like and to share this podcast so that more can hear about this topic on dating and engagement. Today, we are in our second episode going into this series, and we will be talking about moving towards marriage. So Derek, uh, can you tell our audience uh, and give them some wisdom about this? Well, I think, you know, when I, when I think about this and, and many times dealing in pastoral ministry over the last 20 over years, um, people have issues of transiting. They're in love. They want to build a life together. Um, but now how do we begin to move towards that oneness? And so um, it's important for us you know, to understand the Bible. The Bible says, you know, when a man leaves his father and mother, he shall cleave to one woman and they'll become one flesh. And right. so um, we, we talked in our last session about singleness and how we need to um, be secure in God. And when the person comes along and we know God's adding to us and they have the qualities of someone we want to spend our life together. But how do we transition from now? OK, we're, we're moving and dating. We want to get married. We're engaged. We're planning the wedding. It doesn't happen. We just have our wedding uh, night. We come together and like, okay, now let's do life together. Mm -hmm. How do we move in that process of doing that? And I think um, the word cleaving is the biblical word where we've got to begin to leave um, the mindset of singleness, mm -hmm. um, which is what where we're living life. It's just us and God. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're um, in that kind of mindset or even with our family where, you know, for a woman before she's married, um, you know, um, her covering is her father. But now you're moving towards covering with your your husband. Um, for a man, you know, he's independent. It's him and God now. And now, like, I've got a woman that I need to guard to, to, to you know, be there for, to govern and to, and to, to guide. Mm -hmm. So how do we make that process? I think it has to do with the cleaving where we begin to, you know, through our discussions, through our planning, begin to start having those conversations. You know, going through marriage counseling is very important. Um, you know, I, I was reading an article and, and the, the people were saying, you know, we didn't, we don't need marriage counseling because we're in love. Mm, wow. And, uh, mm. I thought that, you know, like, oh, because love is the glue we're, we're together. Like counseling is only for people who have problems. And, mm -hmm. you know, and I saw that and even the, you know, the person who wrote the article was like, that's crazy because you can fall in love and fall out of love. Mm. <laughs> and so people, I mean, I mean, people have said, well, we just don't love each other anymore. We mm. fell out of love. Well, what really is love? Love is a commitment. Right. Love is a choice. Now, the mm -hmm. emotions and, and all those things, that's a different issue. But the Bible says, choose to love the one you've chosen. Mm -hmm. And so how do we get into that? That's where we need to start talking together and planning and working together and doing that because we can get so caught up in the honeymoon. We can get so caught up in the marriage and the dress and the food and all the party and all of that. Yeah. And then some people have this big emotional letdown after the wedding and they've never put in the work to plan about what marriage would be like. So I think, yeah. you know, marriage counseling is very important to go through, go through mm -hmm. marriage preparation. We don't marry anyone in our church without mm -hmm. going through that because we want to make sure we've given them the tools. And even then people, you know, have issues and struggle, but at mm -hmm. least they've got the tools. And so um, finances, how are we going to deal with our finances? Where are we going to live? Um, how are we going to deal with our in-laws mm -hmm. and our, you know, our outlaws? I mean, you know, and, and dealing with those things. Kids, what are the things we're wanting? Um, careers, how is that going to work? Ministry, all of that. Where we start laying that foundation. I think we talked to one of the series of the foundation of how we're going to have marriage. And so, you know, that doesn't happen the day you get engaged. But between the, the engagement and the wedding, we need to start building that together, communicating and start planning uh, to build a life together. Right. And I think that the problem is people, uh, when we talk about counseling, you know, they associate with uh, having problem and so you need to come in and help. So maybe a better word will be uh, preparation for a successful marriage. Yeah. And we know that marriage is, in this time and age, it, it is uh, definitely a very tough thing to do to have a successful marriage. So we need to give people handles, you know, in order for them to navigate through uh, the marriage be and and bring these two person with different background, different uh, different background, different uh, challenges and different uh, thoughts, different uh, way of upbringing to bring them together. And God is not just wanting two person to share a common home address. 
Yeah. That's not marriage. They're not we'll share a same <laughs> uh, bank account. That's not marriage. Uh, to come together and produce children, the next gener, uh, the next uh, generation, it is you know that is just a part of being married. But what God is wanting to see, and that's why we always have to come back to the original uh, intention of God. What's the original intent of God when He created marriage? Uh, he wanted He He separate one into two. Right? He put Adam to sleep. And then he divided Adam into half. The Bible says he took a rib. We always understand it's a rib, but actually the word, the word is not a rib. It is a side. Uh, so it's actually God took half of Adam out and made it into a woman. And he says, you know, now this is a bone to my bone, flesh to my flesh. So the woman came out of the man. So in creation, one became two. But in a marriage, the two now must come back into oneness. Mm, so good. the yeah. power of oneness is so crucial. Why did God do that, right? Uh, God want the two individual to find one another and be willing to abandon themselves. That's what the leaving is all about. They need to leave. They need to abandon themselves and come together and cleave to one another. The concept of this is found also in John about abiding where you abide in me and I abide in you. Yeah. So the concept is when we abide, abide is not just hang together. Abide means we cling on together, a cleave together in such a depth and dimension that you cannot see where do you start and where you, where she ends. You, you understand? Yeah. It, it, it just come together, feels together as, as one. So when the two become one, then we will have a very powerful marriage, a fruitful life. Yeah. Uh, so it is so important for un us to understand the process of abandonment. This concept is also, if I may, uh, uh, repeated in how a child is born, right? Uh, where the the sperm enters the egg, right? And then there must be an uh, abandonment of the original form. And then the two merge together and form a new creation. I believe God has released an apostolic anointing for breakthrough. It's the ox anointing, an anointing that's not just for the apostle, but for a people that are downloading the strategies of heaven into their life, into their businesses, into their family, into their ministries. This ox anointing is available for everyone and we desire to see you getting into breakthrough. Consider becoming a Breakthrough Mentorship Partner today so that we can partner together with you, join our faith together with you, and believe God for your breakthrough. So when husband and wife get married, they must abandon themselves and form a we. Yeah form a new uh, entity, a th new entity. Yeah. No longer you and I, but we yeah. now. And, and now it's the new one, you know, the new mm, one. The new one. Very good. It's also the Bible says you have to leave first before you can cleave. You can never cleave if you don't leave. You know, what is that? Leaving the bachelor lifestyle, the bachelorette lifestyle, leaving um, the dependency on family, you know, um, friends. We still have friends, but you know, our spouse now is our best friend. We can't be sharing with our girlfriend and not sparing with our pals, our spouse or with our, you know, our guy friend and not sharing with, you know, our spouse. So that's part of that leaving to begin to acclimate and begin to now focus on the new and, and coming together. If we don't leave, and that's the problem in many marriages, is they haven't left. You know, they're married, but they still want to act like they're single and be out with their guy friends and playing sports all the time and not be with their wife or or the wife emotionally never left, you know, dependency on the mom uh, or yeah. the dad, you know. And right. so she's, you know, they get in a fight and she runs home and wants to sleep on the couch, you know. And and that's the thing we have to, um, you know, come to play where we're clean. We're leaving. We shut the door on that. Now we have a life together. And what affects me affects you. What affects you affects me. And building that that life together through communication, through planning, through relating. And if we're not ready for that, we're really not ready for marriage. That's true. Um, so it is important for us to uh, learn how to leave. Uh, and the leaving process many a times is not done properly, right? Yeah, yeah. So we may have a past relationship and it's over. But still, that person carries this in her soul, in his mm -hmm. soul, yeah. 
the the person that they had a previous relationship with. Mm-hmm. So that complicates matter because now you there's a third party in your marriage, right? You may be married to a, a, a another man, but you are still carrying in your soul the wounds yeah. that you have suffered from a previous you haven't relationship. Haven't been healed. You, yeah. you have not uh, healed. So when you are not healed, you cannot cleave totally. So the cleaving process sometimes get a little bit of a roadblock. Yeah, and uh, we can see, you know, they both are dating happy, you know, and they're so in love. They say we can't wait to get married. And what happens when they get married? World War Three, dun dun dun, all hell broke loose. Mm-hmm. Why? Because when uh when you get married, you allow that person to come close enough, and that person becomes a trigger yeah. for everything that you try to suppress and hide. Yeah, and we don't know our roles. I think you know part of that coming together is. You know, the roles in dating are going to be different. And the roles of dating is about having fun, getting to know together, sharing, doing activities together, and the bonding comes. But in marriage, it's about building a life together. It's about purpose. It's about that oneness coming, um, which which is a whole whole new ball game, a whole different level. And so we've got to be ready for that, you know. And, and if we don't know our roles, you know, we can come into a marriage. And so the man doesn't know his role and the woman doesn't know her role and it gets messed up. We can't become one with the two parts, you know, the, the analogy you gave about of, of that. And one, if we don't know where we fit and where we're at. So one person is trying to come one way, another person is trying to come another way. It's not going to fit and it's not going to work. And so it's so mm-hmm. important for us to do that and understand God's real original intention for men, real intention for women and the role of the wife, the role of the husband. Um, that that that's part of that cleaving together so we know how this is supposed to work. And who defines that? It should be God. God's the creator. He created Adam. He created Eve. He created marriage. Um, it's not the tabloids or or the, the books we read or the novel we read. And, and sometimes we come with all the wrong expectations. The um, We come with fantasy of what it's like, you know, that, oh, you know, he the man just exists to make me happy and think that he's just going to, mm-hmm. you know, be there and you're his princess. I'm the queen. And, you know, mm-hmm. you know, of course, if you treat him like the king, he'll treat you like a queen. <laughs> but there's a whole other thing that uh, of how God defines it rather than how the world defines it. And so that becomes very much of the problem um, because we're so excited to get married. But then we don't understand the roles. and in, in, We don't in, understand the uh, significance behind marriage. Yeah. And, you know, we often say that marriage is not to make you happy, but it's to make you holy. Yeah. So For it sure. is two person willing to embark on the journey to be Christ and to abandon themselves, to give themselves fully away, just as Christ gave himself yeah. fully away to us. We now want to fully give our way to someone else and to make their life better yeah. uh, and to come together and do great things for the Lord, right? Yeah. Marriage, there is no trial and error. There's no trial and error in marriage and there's no return policy. You don't marry a wife and 90 days later you say, oh, it doesn't fit. I'm going to return it. Yeah. yeah, it's it's not like you buy a new piece of garment and or something in a shop. So we must get marriage right because broken marriages has tremendous impact uh, even if you do not have children, it has a tremendous effect uh, on uh, the church, the body of Christ, and our authority in this area. And also uh, it affects uh, society and the well-being of society. And if you have children, uh, detrimental uh, effect on the children. Yeah, yeah, it's true. And, and that's what we see the problem in society is brokenness of relationships and marriage and fatherless generation and, you know, single moms, even single dads, all of Mm -hmm. that. That's not the way. But, you know, we've got to go back to God's original intention. God's a God um, who brings restoration. But what is restoration? Coming back to the original intent, the original plan. If we want to do marriage right, we need to find out God's um, plan and and, and, and follow that. So that's Mm -hmm. leaving. um, That's cleaving, becoming Mm -hmm. one flesh, becoming one uh, whole together, husband and wife, one person who build life together. And when we do that, it's a beautiful thing. It takes work, but it's a beautiful thing. And God intended it to be a blessing um, and to bring a, a unity and a place of agreement where there's power in that. So if right. you're dating, don't get into the fantasy of just marriage. And you know, we just want to get married and have a beautiful wedding and take the photos, build a life, put the work that's necessary in um, to leave the things that need to be left, to deal with the past relationships 
to, to begin to cleave and come together as one and build that oneness. So when you start your marriage, you've got the foundation, you've got the right focus there. There's been the planning and the work that's been done to help you to overcome uh, any challenge. Date correctly, do marriage the right way. Let's go back to the originator of a relationship, of marriage, of dating, which was God, and do it the right way so that we can change the tide and uh, see ho- ho- wholesome relationships. We hope you've been blessed by this series. If you had, right. you hit the share button, hit the like button, comment down below. Of course, we can't cover everything in these sessions, but um, the overview that is there, if, you, if you're not in a church, get in a church. The most important decision you make is a decision for Christ and the church that you attend. So you've got that support. And then third most important decision is the person you're going to marry and spend uh, your life together with. So may, be wise in those decisions and uh, do it right. And we pray that God's going to bless you in your relationships. This has been Discussions with Derek and Susan. We'll see you again next week.